Welcome to Ace MTG. Since Wilds of Eldraine came out, one of the decks I've been most excited to play is Selesnya Tokens. I just absolutely have always loved token decks ever since I first started playing the game. There's something about getting that big, massive field and then swarming in for that win. The problem with token decks is they're typically relegated to that fun factor and not actually being competitive because they're very susceptible to board wipes. You have a single plan, you're all in, they sweep that board, now you're left with absolutely nothing. The other problem is if you're going against a really aggressive deck or a deck that consistently lays creatures down that are bigger than yours, you're in big trouble because with your tokens, they're normally much smaller and you don't wanna to have to sit there and just keep chump blocking. We're hoping though, Wilds of Eldraine has now changed this and this can now become a little bit more competitive. The key is going to be our Moonshaker Cavalry. So it says, when this enters the battlefield, creatures you control gain flying and plus X plus X, where X is the number of creatures you control. So obviously the hope is we're a token deck. We have a very wide field. Then we play this and we swing in for their victory right then and there. Now we're hoping not to hard cast it. So the real trick here is the rabble rousing, which whenever you attack with one or more creatures, create that that many one win green and white says in creature tokens. So the whole goal is if I attack in with five creatures, I then am going to make five tokens. That then meets this requirement. If on the hideaway, I was able to actually find my Moonshaker Cavalry, I now am swinging in with a massive field. They're each getting 11-11 flying in the air and that should be game over right there, potentially on turn five. So looking at the rest of the deck, our non-tokens, we are gonna have our little shield hair, our little rabbit, which is going to be our lord for all our tokens. It has a nice adventure side too. Occasionally, right, we could pump up our crew a little bit, give it that vigilance. We have the regal bunny cord. Because we're going so wide, this could be very, very large. Now the problem is it doesn't have any sort of invasive ability, no trample, no flying. So we put in a couple copies of Archangel Elspeth. We can use its minus two ability to make it go in the air, and that could be a win con on its own. Because we are a creature deck, we have Mondrak, we wanna double all those creatures, gotta have a couple copies of Wandering Emperor. Sometimes you just need that removal, you need that little extra life gang, and it is going to be a token producer as well. Then we have our Join the Dance, probably our best choice as far as recurring multiple tokens. Wedding announcement has to go in here, pumps our whole squad, puts out little tokens as well. And the really good one in this deck is the Awaken the Woods. If we're unable to find Rabble Rousing, we might need to hard cast our Moonshaker Cavalry. By playing this, and the hope is we play this on turn four or five, we typically always want at least two of those mana producers. But if you do it on turn four, on turn five, now we have seven mana. Now we could really start getting things going. And the whole key is, this is not only producing more creatures on the battlefield, but it's also that little mana ramp acceleration. So if we happen to have one of these in our hands, we could actually cast it. Now, lots of questions to be asked. I know I'm gonna have fun with this deck. I know I'm excited to play it, but can this actually be competitive? What are we gonna do when we hit a sweeper? What are we gonna do when we're up against a super aggro deck? And that is why we play the games. If you haven't already done so, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'm trying to hit my goal of 1,000 subs and any help you could give me, I'd really appreciate it. So let's go ahead, hit the ladder and see if we could take to the air with some giant flying monsters. All right, here we go. We're at 266, so quite a fall from yesterday, but more people are entering Mythic and we haven't played for about 24 hours. We'll go and keep this. Wishing we were on the play. Ooh, number 27. All right, they had a mulligan one. Oh, soldiers. We're just gonna play the tap land, might as well. We're not doing anything on turn one anyway. All right, so. I feel like Soldiers could be a good matchup for us. I think we definitely have the late game with them. We just have to stop them from obviously flying in the air to take us out. Okay, that's fine, no blocks. No play. We're not gonna attack. We're just gonna go wedding announcement, see if it could stick. Okay. So we're totally fine with that. The only worry with us right now is once they actually get to five creatures, then they just swarm over the top, finish us off. See, we're fine with that too. We'll take all this damage. All right. We want to awaken the woods so we could next turn rabble rousing. Pay two, auto pay. No. Keep this growing. So if we're able to get a hit, it's only the top five, but we have a chance. 
No blocks. All right, here it comes. <gasps> and that is it. That is what we are looking for. Oh my goodness. Oh. Sweet, that is the little combo you're going for right off there. All right, so let's just take a quick look at that. All right, so the whole goal is rabble rousing down. We find our cavalry underneath it. You swing in, immediately it comes out and just a giant mob swinging in for that victory. Excellent, excellent win. All right, so gotta love it. We already did the thing our first game. So, I mean, we could just quit right now. All right, uh, we'll just play the tap land again. I just want multicolors. Doesn't really matter. So this would tell me they're probably a little bit more of the control style. I'd rather get multiple creatures out. Helps our uh, rabbit unicorn. And if we bump them up, it's going to help there as well. Okay, little flash 2-2. Two -two. I was thinking maybe a little bit more control, but maybe not. They might be doing the exact same plan we are, actually. Yeah, no blocks. Skrelv. Ooh, and an angel. Okay, definitely not the same plan. All right. I was going to say we were about to have a turn that was not going to be very mana efficient. We'll go ahead and pass. Now, next turn, we double drop. I think I want to drop these two. Okay, what are they doing? Some angels and some flying and I just, yeah. We need to hit that fifth land though. We're, we could be in huge trouble if we don't get that. Do I just go two big old bunnies? I think we're just going two big old bunnies. Because next turn, right, we could pump a creature up and then pump up the squad. So I like that a little bit better. We have to start putting pressure on them here. All right, so a nice big board. We get our land. We could be in great shape. So what are we taking? Six. We're taking eight. We are on a one turn clock. Or we're taking nine. Sorry. All right. Okay, we get the land. Here it comes. We need this hit, otherwise we are done. Ooh, come on, baby. Oh my gosh, we hit it. Can you believe this? Okay, I'm sure a Wandering Emperor. Yes. I mean, I haven't done the math, but it looks good to me. Waiting on it. Oh, look at this. Wait a minute. What? Why did these not get bigger? Okay. I was, I, I was super worried. Okay. That trigger hit first, then that one. Okay. Take care of one of my creatures. That's fine. Get rid of a 28. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, that does nothing. Okay. That's nice. We got to see the werewolf bodyguard. Okay. Whew. Had me scared there for a second, though. I was like, wait, is there some trick I don't know about? So let's just take a quick look at that battlefield. All right. So Werewolf Bodyguard flashes in. That's true. I, it's the first time I've actually seen this card played against me. I'm going to have to be careful of that. But just by taking my cavalry, doesn't stop it. That trigger already hits. Everybody gets big. It gets huge. That was going through. So right now, we are two for two with this. All right. We're hitting it right on turn five. The hideaway is only for five. So I am surprised we found it as frequently. I only have three copies of my cavalry. And I'm wondering, should I have a fourth? Because we really need to hit this off of it. All right, so right now we are two for two. Don't love to see that in our hand. And two taps, so we'll play one of them. So we are two for two for hitting our big combo. And the only concern I have though right now is if we hadn't hit that combo in both those games, we would have lost. All right, let's go ahead and pass. So 
how is this deck's actual power in a matchup where we don't hit it? Ugh. Control is going to be a tough one. Wedding announcement's huge if it can land. Okay, notice that pause there. So let's go ahead and swing in first. All right, we really need this to hit. This is a big, big card for us. Okay. Let's see if they are a reanimation style one or just a straight control. Reanimation. Ooh, spicy. Let's see what they have. So we probably don't have to worry about counter spells. We're just gonna attack for one. So unfortunately, this is gonna come in tab next turn, so we won't get that down on turn. But I wanna at least try and get my Mondrak out. Okay, more looting. Because the problem is I only have two of these left. Holy jeez, what? Okay. Two giant sorceries. What is the key of that in their graveyard? Ugh, gross, 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 gross. All right, just our bunny corn. Good damage, though, we could bring with this. Especially if we get our rabble rousing down. A leer. Oh, that's fun. That's unfortunate. Swing in, get two more. They're gonna block right there, but we get seven in. All right, we get our Mondrak down next turn. Two, four, six. Flashback. How do they play these though? They have no red right now. What is their trick? Okay, lose my board. At least we have we have nothing too big. They have my Mondrak. Two, four, six. We're gonna play this next. Holy cow. Oh, they are popping off right now. And a Chandra. Well, let's just sit back and relax. This is just gonna be fun to watch. We are now officially out of this game. But it's always fun in these first few days, what fun little brew do people have? And what's new about this deck? Why could we not have popped off with this in the past? Draw a card, then discard a card. Okay, that's one new little piece of tech. So even if we get, even if we hard cast this, it does nothing for us. I mean, we might as well just swing in, right? We want to get rid of their Leer. Could give it Indestruct, okay. They're just gonna get it back so they have their free chump block every single time. At any point they want, they could still depopulate. At least I could save my creature though. At two mana, oh, there it is. We can do this together. All right, and they double it. So this is game right now. All right, GG's. Well, that's eight. Tap both your spells. Yeah, that's 10, it doubles, that's 20 damage. What am I missing? There it is. All right, that is rough. That was cool though. I'll take that loss. That was a fun one to watch. I just like being a part of something like that. All right, the Golden Crow, I think this was our first or second opponent, right? All right, let's go ahead and keep. All right, 
Uh, I think I'd rather have my two one ones. We'll see. So they were soldiers last time. So we'll get this down. Because then we could flash in the 2 2. I like that a lot better. Okay. There's their big boy. We're going to need another land. That other land's going to be crucial. So we're just going to actually play this now. All right. Go ahead and pass. If we get another land, we go rabble rousing, which really starts to get us. Go oh, no. All right. That hurts. Maybe we should have waited. Okay, we at least could play both of these. Oh, wait, we don't want... Okay, we have to do one. We have to do one. Can't let it go to nighttime. And let's pass. All right, they all bump up. Ooh, nasty. Pass. I don't think I can afford to take... Yeah. I can't afford to take nine. All right, so two blocks. All right, we get it. Just a wedding announcement, nothing huge. It's gonna be just a two for two, so no point. We're just dead, though. There's, oh, my goodness. Look at this. Yeah. I mean, we just double block. We're just sitting here chumping. And they got some monster soldiers on us. And two more. And now not any block is going to help us. GG's. And they're all flying in the air, too. Yeah, this is what I was afraid of, though, getting run over like this. We had a nice start, 2-0, and now we're just getting smoked. So two absolute thrillers that got us pumped and excited. And then a little bit of devastation ever since. So instant speed our 2-2. Then we could give it a pump and play the creature. Not the worst thing in the world. see what we're up against we see white okay all right adam the universe we played yesterday let's go ahead and pass and he had this azorius token yep he's still playing it it was a wonky one let's hope they mess up an attack oh yes all right people aren't used to that card yet so we're gonna get a few of those All right, let's... I just want to use the, more mana efficiency. And when I ramp, I want to ramp a little bit bigger. All right. In for four. So next turn will get us to six. We can play our virtual loyalty. And then we're getting close to just hard casting that. We'd love to get a bigger battlefield, though. So I know I played them yesterday or the day before. I'm trying to remember their full list. We ended up going one and one with them. Actually, I think it was yesterday. All right, so they're missing a land drop, it looks like. So yeah, I don't remember removal. I know maybe a bounce spell, but nice. Elspeth, we could just start going in hard. And then next turn. Yeah, I actually like that. We're going to just take full advantage here. Can't pump it. So now we'll be able to at least get... Uh, sorry, three Awake in the Woods. They might just... Concede right here if they didn't get the land. I was going to say, okay. Get to scry, look for what they need. See if they have a two drop. If they have an empty battlefield, that's when they're really going to start getting in trouble. All right.
Okay, here we go. This is our best to get three, and the next turn we could do that. All right, so let's get another soldier out. Let's do this for three. And attack for three. If they want to trade both of theirs for mine, I'm okay with that. Now, if they did that, it would tell me they might have a depopulate in hand. So next turn, five, six, seven, eight. All of these then are gonna be big. What is that? Three, four, five, six, seven, that'll be eight. All of them get an eight, eight. All right, this is a good game right here. So we're actually getting to hard cast this for the victory. Would have been a totally different matchup though if they obviously hit all their lands. I still think we would have been able to win this though. And there it is. I win. Back in the win column. All right. So we'll talk more about it in our outro, but I already just, I have some bad feelings with this deck and some things I just don't like. So it could make you feel really, really good like it did those first couple games. But then even with those games, right, we would have lost if we did not top deck it. We had what, a six, six and a half, seven percent chance of actually hitting and winning those games. All right, so we're gonna go Regal Bunnycorn into wedding announcement. I hope we hit our fourth land so we could double drop. If we don't double drop, we at least could, at le this is a good three mana spell later on as well. Fact we're seeing black though is gonna be dangerous. They're deciding right now, kill it. Okay, minus three, minus three. Before it got too big, good call. All right, ooh, double wedding announcement. That's gonna be huge. I mean, the good thing at least with this deck is if we do pop off, who cares what their life total is? Need to avoid a Sheldred though. Sheldred's gonna be bad news. Okay. Now we're definitely on a clock. Yep, resolve. Get another one down. Pass. We'll have to use a chumper if Shelter does decide to swing in. They might be cautious because when they see this mana, they could be worried about a Wandering Emperor and we do have two in our deck. Okay, no concerns. All right, so Bunny Corn, two more creatures. We could flash this in. Maybe we just play our rabbit. Oh. Bye bye, bunny corn. All right, so then Mondrak, though, we're okay with that pick too. Get four, two, two. Oh, okay, they get rid of that. We'll draw. Resolve. We're going to play it all out so we get a little. Lay that down. Play this. At least we get some damage in. And just swing in with one of them. All right, grow our squad, get a couple more tutus. At least we're presenting a dangerous board right now. I think I'll use a token and my vigilance to kill Sheldred if they attack in. But we're on a very tight clock. So lose three life there. We need to get to the air. Rebel Rousing is our best bet. Rebel Rousing could give us the win. I mean, we'll have to hit, but right now it looks like our only hope. Depopulate. Oh man. That's devastation, right? Not very mana efficient to do that. So let's go here. Slightly more mana efficient. At least we have a 4-4. Four, four. Sheldred comes back. Can't imagine him taking anything else. 
They want to put us back on the clock. Yep. We could at least tack into that if they don't have the kill spell before cards in hand. Definitely could use just a chumper. So that's going to be six lands next turn. Virtue of Persistence could start ticking off as well. And that's the problem, right? We have a swarm and then any type of mass removal with a deck like this, we're just done. And that's always been the trouble with any type of token deck. So even though there are a ton of fun things like that, getting them to that super competitive level, that's the hard part. They have something in hand. They're just waiting on? Okay. What are they getting back? Another one? Yeah, that makes sense. Nice little loop. All right, get this down. Really swing in for big damage. See if they just block it so they could get it back anyway. They might just take it too. They have such a nice high life total. Easy chumper. All right, so grow my squad. So we actually have a formidable battlefield now. That's seven. Okay, so they're going to start recurring every turn. So, okay. Doesn't help us though. I mean, it's big. So block one, get it back anyway. All right, so you're taking eight. Going back up to 18 on their turn. We're going to drop to four. Can we do this? I don't think we can. Get your creature back. Oh, okay. Oh, they take mine. Interesting. Okay, that's right. Because you'll get your creature back. You can play both of them. Ooh, all right. That's it for us. That was sweet. Steal ours and get four. Now they have enough chump blockers. There's nothing we could do. We have to go to the air. Two, four, six. Not going to be able to do it. We only have two turns. On our third turn, we're just dead. Rabble rousing is what we need. Two turns to draw it. Wait a minute. Okay. Take to the air. I am a shining blade in the dark. So you're telling me there's a chance. Swing in. Don't want them gaining any life. That's why I didn't attack. All right, so that's a 10 now. Then we'll get to pump somebody else up. All right. Take my bunny corn. Oh my goodness. If we we're able to get this, this is going to be absolutely amazing. What a top deck. I mean, we had a few options. Get your creature. Thin your deck out a little bit. Not sure what the, the pause is. All right. Gets their land, draws their card. Goes up to 11. They could just swing it in just to gain the life to 13. Won't matter though. We will have enough in the air. They need to have a kill spell. <gasps> oh no, I didn't even pay attention. Oh, good game. Lose two life and then we'll lose a lot. Oh, I thought we could have done it. I didn't even realize. Oh, that was almost a mistake. Oh man, GG's. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll just do some blocks for fun. But even swinging in doesn't have to go to our turn. That's just the final two right there. Oh, they gave us hope and they took it from us. All right, back to 50-50 right now.
All right. We're going to try it out. Needs a third land, and then we could be off to good shape. All right. So join the dance. Hopefully third land into Awake in the Woods, into another Awake in the Woods. All right. Slesnia Artifacts. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Okay. Actually, if we draw land, I might go adventure into the rabbit. Really good, good use out of these. Ooh, okay, what do we have? Interesting. Nope, okay. Cannot miss any lands. Going pass. So next turn, we'll get another two of these down, hoping for land and we'll get three down. We have a combo deck. A straight soldier deck. Uh, that, I mean, this is unique. No blocks. Land, land, land. Ah, oh, darn. Okay. Uh, for two. No attacks. We're going to take some pain right now. So 10, so this is exactly to pop it off. No, actually it's not. I would need to attack with everybody, obviously, and I have to tap a couple of these. Okay, never mind. Yeah. I have to take it. Oh my goodness. What do we have here? What do we have? Let's get the bunny. Pump the squad. And let's pass. I might slow him down for a second. Obviously, strike force officers coming in. I'll s Oh, jeez. Unbelievable. This is a jank soldier deck just absolutely destroying me. We'll block there. We're going to end up dying. Chump. Chump block. I think that's our best bet. Yeah, we'll do that. Man, I cannot believe this thing is about to take us down. I mean, yeah, some strong cards, but this does not belong in a soldier deck. This is not top tier. But neither is our deck, right? Tested it out. Could be a lot of fun, but this is definitely not the way to go. I mean, that's in the air. Just... See if we would have even hit if we had the four. Oh, we would have hit too. That's a shame. So if they didn't attack in there, or uh, I guess we could have. No, we needed all those trades or we were dead last turn. All right. GG's. Well, this is the final nail in the coffin to tell me exactly what I think about this deck now. Welcome back, and I think the title of this video should be They Can't All Be Winners. So we ended up with a losing record there. We ended up going three and four. We had a great start. We were two and oh, we did the thing. It was super exciting, it was fun, it was exactly everything I wanted from it. If you only watched those first two videos, good. You got all the excitement you needed. So we did exactly what we were looking for, right? We got some tokens on the battlefield. We put Rabble Rousing down. We actually hit the Moonshaker Calvary, and then boom, we swung in with some monsters. I think there were some 13 13s coming in in the air. However, you really have to analyze your wins and your losses. So let's look at those first two wins. 
I would have lost that game if I didn't hit this. Essentially, when I played my rebel rousing, I was behind. If I hit anything besides that, we would have lost. We basically had a six, 7% chance of winning both game one and game two. Then we had two losses in a row. We didn't necessarily have the best competition in our other win as well. So that was a deck where they actually got mana screwed. So our three wins are all kind of suspect and then we lost four of them. What happened? We ran into a sweeper and we were done. That is typically the name of the game when you're going against any type of token deck. So. Again, I was wanting this to be competitive. I was hoping it would get there, but unfortunately it's gonna be relegated still to the fun factor. So as far as what Jitsu belt, it's gonna be a blue belt. It's a one trick pony. You have your big monster bomb you could hit him with and you could beat any top tier deck with it. But if they curve out correctly and hit any type of sweeper on you, you're done before you were able to actually do that. The only way this little combo works with the rebel rousing is if you have enough creatures on the battlefield. Otherwise you're never gonna to get to that 10. You're not gonna be able to get high enough. So this deck has a hard time once it falls behind to ever catch back up. And that's why it's gonna have to be a blue belt. Now, as far as fun factor, when I'm sitting there, when I'm in gold, when I'm in early stages of platinum, I'm gonna play this deck again. So I can't wait for October to roll around and I really start doing it. Sitting here in high mythic, this is probably not the deck you're gonna wanna go with. But for a lot of you, if you happen to have some of these cards, sure, go ahead. Problem is the set just came out and we're looking at three mythics there, another three mythics here. Then we're gonna have eight rares from the set. And if you don't already have all these other cards, this is a very expensive deck just for that fun. So that's why I would not recommend it to most people. Hopefully you thought it was a little bit exciting, you saw that combo, but don't get too hyped. I know on early access and in the past couple days, other streamers have been playing decks very similar to this. Okay? It looks great. A lot of them are gonna show you mostly those wins. I show you or I at least tell you every single thing that happens. And if I really think a deck is garbage, no matter how much I want it to be good, I'm gonna let you know. I want you to save those wild cards. Don't waste it on a deck like this unless you're just flowing with the wild cards and you just don't care and you just want a couple games that are just really fun and exciting. Because I'll tell you, when I hit that combo those first two games, that was awesome, it was thrilling. That's what we kind of love Magic for. So if, with that factor, that's the only reason I would say to play this deck. So until next time, never forget, you're an ace.